In our last video, we looked at some fundamental HTML tags that everybody should know. In this video, we're going to focus more on some form tags. So why do we need a form? Well, first of all, let's take a look at an example, a couple examples of a form. Uh, I'm going to go to Plant Places, and the home screen has a search plants by name. So you see, I can type in here Redbud, and it auto-completes as I'm typing in Redbud. Good idea. A nice simple form. I can either put the common name Redbud or I can put Circus Canadensis uh, or I can put in Canadensis. So any part of that name I can put in and it will, there we go. Uh, there are more things called Canadensis, but nonetheless, any part of that name I can put in and it will help me autocomplete, help me if I have a mistake in spelling. So think about that, a very Google-like search form. Uh, that was with a mix of some other things that we won't talk about in this video, things like jQuery. The reason I show you this is this is the new search where you can put any kind of plant name uh, into that box. Let me show you the old search form. The old search form looked like this. Made a lot of sense to me. So genus, species, cultivar, common name. But look at it. It is very intimidating. Uh, it is a lot of things going on. The first time I asked my wife to search for Redbud, she came to the search form and said, where do I put the word Redbud? It's not very clear. So let's try to go with simple as opposed to complex. But nonetheless, you see a lot of different things on here. You see some input text fields. You see some drop down boxes. You see some check boxes where we can choose more than one. So you can have something that is native and edible. Uh, you can have something that is a winter interest and rain garden, things like that. But then we also have radio buttons, which are mutually exclusive. So you can either sort by common name or you can sort by Latin name. Uh, and then we have a drop down here. And this drop down actually has color in it as well. So uh, several different UI elements. If you want to borrow any of these, remember the trick. Hold Control and press U in most browsers. And that will take you over to source. And you can take a look at how, uh, how each of these items are made. So the checkbox. The tag is called input, and then type equals checkbox. Radio button is very similar. Uh, the tag is called input. Sorry about that. Tag is called input, but in this, in this case for a radio button, the type is called radio. So you see both very similar tags in HTML. Just a subtle change makes it a radio button versus a checkbox. Uh, for the, uh, for the dropdowns, we have a, an open select and a closed select. And inside of that, we have a series of options which represent each of those options that can appear in a drop down. Uh, the one that we're going to spend a bit more time on is just a general input. So input type submit value equals search. That's our search button. Uh, but also we will have just a normal text field like this where we have enter a plant name to search. So uh, some fairly simple ones that we can do uh, along with some more complicated ones. So let me show you what we want to do. We know that when we have a form, we're gathering data from the user and we want to post that somewhere. Uh, so post it means we want to take the information that the user has entered and we want to give that to something else. The question is, what is a good something else? Well, let's go a little fast forward into this course, something we're going to be looking at a bit into the future. Uh, if I go, I'm going to go to this link right here. So plantplaces.com slash pearl slash mobile view plants JSON combined name equals oak. Now, if I do a view source on this, it gives me a fixed character width, which is a bit easier to, to see, a bit easier to manage. But take a look. You see how that says oak? What if I change that to maple? Take a look at the data that follows. And when I switch it to maple, you see we get an entirely different set of data. Again, this is a JSON format, a format we haven't talked about yet, but we will definitely talk about a bit later in the semester. And this is an ideal JSON feed because we can decide what we get back based on what parameter here we associate with this combined name. So I'm going to say, uh, what if I say Redbud? Let's try Redbud. We see we get even a smaller data set. Now, look at where I'm putting Redbud. I'm putting Redbud after combined name equals. This is what we would call a name value pair. The name is combined name. The value is Redbud. So somehow I need to make a form, something like this, which is going to take me over to this page so that I can view details that are related to my form. So let's get started. 
back in Visual Studio now, I probably ought to put this on a different page, um, but mm, for, I'll just keep it on the same page. Uh, so back in Visual Studio, yeah, you know, it actually does kind of make sense to keep it on this page because I'm only going to do one uh, text box. I'm going to make this a very simple form. First of all, anything that we want to submit, we have to wrap in a tag called form. So you see form name equals, and we'll say search, that's fine. And then I'm going to say uh, method equals get. Now the options are get or post. Uh, there are actually seven options. The most common we're going to see are get or post. Now there's a subtle difference between the two. Get means that whatever the user submits is going to appear right up here in this URL in plain text. Okay. Post means it's not going to appear in the URL. It's going to go under the covers. So the question is, which one is better? The answer is it depends. It depends. If you are logging on to online banking, you don't want your username and password to be in the URL because that could potentially be saved in history, uh, could find it. So if it's a login form, we want to do post. If we're uploading an image, if we're uploading a uh, data file of some kind that has a lot of data, we want to do post because we couldn't put an image up here in this address bar. However, what about this? Let's go ahead and search for a plant. Uh, I'll say genus contains Circus. Uh, so we'll take a look at Circus, and that only gave me one. Let me go back home and let me just do a search for uh, Redbud. So I search for Redbud, I hit search, and you see what comes up here are all kinds of different Redbuds, about 18 of them total. Now take a look. Do you see up here in the URL it says name search equals Redbud? I want that to be in the URL because what if you want to share this list with your friend? Okay, so if I copy this and I open Chrome Incognito, which means it doesn't know anything about my other browser, and I paste it, okay, we're going to see, hopefully, that I get the exact same results, the exact same Redbud. And there we go. Sure enough, we see those Redbud trees again. So Git versus Post, what do we use? Do we want to put it in a URL that can be shared? If so, we use Git. Do we want to not show the data, or is there a lot of uh, binary data? Then we want to use Post. Okay, so we're going to use get so that we can see the what the user submitted in plain text here. Okay, so back to Visual Studio and for method equals get action. Action means where do we want to send this form data? Okay, so for that, I'm going to grab just, well, I'll tell you what, we'll go back here. I'm going to grab uh, the domain name, so www.plantplaces.com, the relative directories, and then view plants json.pl. That part is static, that part won't change. The part after the question mark might change, but the part before the question mark is not going to change. So I copy this, I take it over to Visual Studio, I make that my action, terminate that tag, and you see it gives me a closed form tag. Now, within this closed form tag, I'm going to say label. Okay, uh, label, um, actually, I'll tell you what. We'll keep it like so. We'll need to make a couple changes in a moment, but a label says that I go along with some kind of input text. So for label, I'm going to say plant name. Okay. And then after label, I'm going to say input type equals text. Okay. Name. This is really important. What's the name? Well, the name is going to correspond with that name value pair. Sorry, just one moment. The name is going to be this name that precedes the, the equal sign. So between the question mark and the equal sign. So in our case, we need name to be combined underscore name. That just happens to be the name we're using in this form. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to take it back here and I'm going to say, boom, name equals combined name. Okay, we'll terminate our input type tag. Now label, I'm going to add one more attribute here. I'm going to say label for equals and then combined underscore name to just associate these two things together. Okay, after that, let's go ahead and add a BR to give ourselves a line break. So BR and then a slash to make it proper XML. And then finally, input type equals submit. This is kind of a special thing. That means it's a submit button. So it can submit a form. It can say, we're all finished entering data. I'm going to submit this form. Uh, if we wish, we can give it a name or we can give it a value. Uh, so I might say value uh, search. That's fine. And of course, I'll spell search right. Okay. And then once again, we'll make this a singleton tag. We don't need to put anything in between it. So we'll make it a self-closing tag. Uh, and then I'm going to choose save. Okay. Let's go back and take a look at our page now. 
So I'm back to our page. Just a moment. Run back to our page and I refresh and take a look. It's kind of in a funny location. Maybe we want to put a div around this or some kind of border, but you see plant name and then search. So let me type in Redbud and notice I'm just kind of on a local page here, local to my computer. When I hit search, what happens? Take a look. Does that look familiar? Hit search. Sure enough, we go right back to our JSON feed. Uh, so that looks pretty good. You see, I put in Redbud and I get back only Redbuds. If I put in Oak, okay, and search, I get back Oaks. So you see how we can make a form from one page give us a certain behavior page, which is quite interesting. Uh, so we could keep going. We could go with rows, anything like that. So this is the, these are the basic ingredients of a form. We need that form tag. Uh, labels helpful, not necessary, but definitely helpful. Uh, input type of some kind, and then a submit button. And I showed you there are several other things that we can put in a form as well. Things like the select and the option to, to, to do a dropdown. Uh, things like input types, radio, and checkbox. So we have quite a few different options. Gives you something to play with. Now, on the same note, uh, in Visual Studio, we'll do a different video on this. But in Visual Studio, if you make a .aspx page, that essentially is a form, and they have a nice kind of drag and drop interface that allows us to uh, very easily uh, drop components onto the form. So we'll look at that in a future video, but uh, this gives us some